Welcome to Learning Anatomy with Dr. Bakari. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the portosystemic anastomosis. Write down with me as I unfold the basics that you need to know as students of anatomy on the portosystemic anastomosis. <laughs> The portosystemic anastomosis is a communication network created between the portal venous system and the systemic venous drainage. If you try to break the name down at this point, you see that it is a combination of two venous drainage systems, which is the portal venous system and the systemic venous drainage. And that is why it is so named the portosystemic anastomosis. The portosystemic anastomosis can also be referred to as the portocava anastomosis. We also try to put a demarcation here between porto and cava. You see there is a communication network that is created between the portal venous system and also the systemic venous drainage. Because the, the systemic venous drainage is structurally made up of the superior and the inferior vena cava. So the portosystemic anastomosis can also be referred to as the portocava anastomosis. And this is the collateral communication network that is created between portal venous system and the systemic venous drainage. So you have the portal vein and its tributaries, and also the systemic veins, which include the superior and the inferior vena cava. So you have a communication network created between these two venous drainage systems. So when you have a communication network created between the portal vein and its tributaries, and also branches that will be draining blood into the superior and the inferior vena cava, we then have the creation of the portosystemic anastomosis. Let's look at the relevance or the importance of this portosystemic anastomosis or the portocava anastomosis. Why is this anastomosis created between the portal vein and its tributaries and also branches draining into the superior and inferior vena cava? Why is the establishment of this anastomosis important in the body? This is what we already know. We know that the portal vein is created here and it is formed by the union of the splenic vein and also the superior mesenteric vein. So these two veins are the major tributaries of the portal vein and they unite at this point to form the portal vein. This portal vein is also seen to receive minor tributaries from other veins around the gastrointestinal tract and also the organs are located around that region. So you have this highlighted in red. You have, you have minor tributaries here. You have another minor tributary here. You know, you have a number of tributaries draining deoxygenated blood, both nutrient-rich blood into the portal vein. After it is formed by the union of the splenic and the superior mesenteric vein. So you have the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein as the major tributaries of the portal vein. Then you have minor tributaries, which are the regions that are highlighted in red and are also seen to drain into the portal vein. Also, if you look at it, you see that the major tributaries, which include the splenic vein and also the superior mesenteric veins, are also seen to receive secondary or sub-tributaries. And this is what is also highlighted in red. So you can see sub-tributaries also draining into the major tributaries of the portal vein. This is what we already know. So what is the essence of this? We know that the blood that the portal vein and its tributaries carry is deoxygenated, but it is rich in nutrients. And this blood is directed into the liver. It is directed into the liver so that the liver can pick up the nutrient that's contained within this blood up and use it to manufacture its own food. So the liver takes this nutrient up within the blood and uses it as raw materials to, to produce its own finished product. And these products include proteins and also some other chemical substances that the body needs to function. So that is the essence of the portal vein carrying deoxygenated blood, but nutrient-rich blood into the liver so that the liver can use it up to manufacture its own substances. This we already know. As I have given a comprehensive lecture on the portal vein, you can go and check that lecture up to keep yourself updated. And of course, because this blood is deoxygenated, it is supposed to be transported through the inferior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava here located behind the creation of the portal vein. But because the blood is rich in nutrients, it is taken from the gastrointestinal tract and also the organs that are located around that region. And this is directed into the portal vein so that the liver can pick the nutrient content within this blood up and use it to produce its own substances. 
But the other way around, it's supposed to be directed into the inferior vena cava. Why the inferior vena cava will make with the superior vena cava to form the vena cava? And finally, the deoxygenated blood will be directed into the right atrium of the heart. So that is how it is supposed to go. But because there is a necessity for the liver to produce its own substances, and of course, it will need raw materials to do this. And the only vein that will be bringing this nutrient-rich blood to the liver is the portal vein. This is the essence of the portal vein, just to deliver nutrient-rich blood to the liver. So going further, when there is blockage of the portal vein, this blood that is supposed to be directed through the portal vein, this deoxygenated blood, but nutrient-rich blood that is supposed to be directed through the portal vein to be released into the liver, the part of this blood will be blocked and this will now need to create another part through which this blood will move so that the deoxygenated blood can be drained out of the portal venous system. And the only way to do this is by creating anastomosis at specific regions of the portal venous system so that the blood will be drained back into the inferior vena cover. And that is the essence of creating portosystemic anastomosis. So when there's blockage, there's going to be retrograde movement of blood or backflow movement of blood into the site where portosystemic anastomosis are created. Also to add that the valveless nature of the portal vein and its tributaries also further contributes for the blood movement in backward direction. So the blood will be able to move easily in backward direction because of the absence of valve. We've stated before in our previous lecture on the portal vein, if you've not checked that lecture, please kindly go and do so. We stated that the portal vein is not a true vein because it is valveless. Veins are generally seen to contain valves, but the portal vein and its tributaries are seen to be valveless. And this valveless nature is what is seen to further enhance easy movement of blood in backward direction when there is blockage. You can see that the structural configuration of structures within the body also further contribute to enhancing the functions that they perform. If there are valves created within the portal vein and its tributaries, it will hinder the movement of blood. So you see blood being directed backwards and it's going to be easy because of the valveless nature of the portal vein. So it will now look for other means through which the blood will be drained out of the portal venous system. And the only way that this will occur is by driving the blood towards regions where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. It is through this site of portosystemic anastomosis that the blood will be drained and transported back into the systemic venous drainage. This is what is seen. There's going to be backflow of blood and this blood will move backwards and will be directed into regions where we have this communication network created between the systemic venous drainage. So at specific regions of the portal venous system, we have anastomosis with branches of the systemic venous system. And this is what is highlighted here in black. So at specific regions, we have the creation of the portosystemic anastomosis. And as this anastomosis is created, blood will then be directed backward into the site where this anastomosis are created, and it will further be delivered into the systemic venous drainage because the path through which the blood should go is already blocked and it needs to look for the available route for it to pass so as to be drained out of the portal venous system. And this is where we have the creation of the portosystemic anastomosis to allow this to occur so that the blood can finally be directed into the systemic venous drainage. So this is what is seen. This is another region where the portosystemic anastomosis is created. We also have another region down here where the portosystemic anastomosis is created. So a specific point within the portal venous system, we have the creation of anastomosis. And this anastomosis will be seen to have the portal component and also the systemic component so that the blood will drain backwards into the systemic component where it will be finally collected into the inferior or the superior vena cava as the case may be. So the question now will be where had the portosystemic or portocava anastomosis created? We've stated in our previous slide that specific regions of the portal venous system have the creation of anastomosis. So let's try and see where specifically these anastomosis are created. And before we go further, it's good for us to revisit the tributaries of the portal vein. 
We have done this in our previous lecture on the portal vein, but it is good for us to re-establish the different major, minor, and also the sub-tributaries of the portal vein, so that by the time we'll be highlighting the different sites where the portosystemic or the portal cover anastomosis is created, it will be very easy for us to understand. So going back to the formation of the portal vein, we know that the portal vein has two major tributaries, and it is formed by the splenic vein. And this is the splenic vein and also the superior mesenteric vein. And this is the superior mesenteric vein. So these two veins will unite to form the portal vein. This is not to mean that the portal vein does not also receive minor tributaries from other veins around it. And this will lead us to the minor tributaries. So we also have minor tributaries of the portal vein. And these are the right gastric vein. This is the right gastric vein. The right gastric vein is also seen to receive the prepyloric vein of Mayo. This is what is highlighted here. Then the next vein is the left gastric vein. This is the left gastric vein here. The left gastric vein is also seen to receive the esophageal veins. So we have the esophageal veins here at this point being drained into the left gastric vein. The next vein is the cystic vein. This is the cystic vein, the vein that drains the gallbladder. You can see that it is closely located to the liver because we know the gallbladder is closely also located to the liver. The cystic vein is seen to drain into the right branch of the portal vein. The portal vein at a point will be seen to divide into the right branch and the left branch. So the cystic vein is seen to drain into the right branch of the portal vein, as you can see here. Then the next vein that is seen is the paraumbilical vein. This is the paraumbilical vein here. The paraumbilical vein is seen to drain into the left branch of the portal vein. This means that the portal vein, after its formation, will be seen to further divide into the right branch and the left branch. So this is the right branch, this is the left branch. So the left branch of the portal vein is seen to receive the paraumbilical vein, and this is what is arrowed here in blue. Then the next vein is the superior pancreatic duodenal vein, and this is the superior pancreatic duodenal vein down here. So these are the minor tributaries of the portal vein. This we have adequately described in our previous lecture on the portal vein to be good for you to go and check that lecture up so as to keep yourself updated. Then going further on the tributaries, we also have sub-tributaries. And these sub-tributaries are like secondary tributaries that are also seen to drain into the major tributaries. Remember, we already highlighted the splenic vein and also the superior mesenteric vein uniting to form the portal vein. So the two major tributaries, which are the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein, also are seen to have secondary tributaries that also drain the oxygenated blood, both nutrient-rich blood into them. And for the splenic vein first, the splenic vein is seen to receive the pancreatic veins. These are the pancreatic veins here. We also have the pancreatic veins down here. Then the second vein is the short gastric vein. This is what is harrowed here in red. Then we have the left gastroepiploid vein. This is the left gastroepiploid vein. It is also referred to as the left gastromental vein. Then we have the inferior mesenteric vein. This, this is the inferior mesenteric vein here, arrowed in white and highlighted in black. So you see the inferior mesenteric vein draining into the splenic vein. When the splenic vein, we further met with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. So that is how it is created around this space. Also to add that the inferior mesenteric vein has its own secondary tributaries. So for the inferior mesenteric vein, we have the left colic vein. This is the left colic vein. We have the sigmoidal veins. These are the sigmoidal veins here, highlighted in black. Then we have the superior rectal vein. This is the superior rectal vein here. Then going on the superior mesenteric vein, which is one of the major tributaries of the portal vein, it also has its own secondary tributaries that are seen to drain deoxygenated but nutrient-rich blood into it. And the first one is the inferior pancreatic duodenal vein. This is the inferior pancreatic duodenal vein. Remember, we have a superior pancreatic duodenal vein here above that is seen as a tributary of the portal vein. So this is a corresponding named vein at the inferior part. And this is a secondary triple tree of the superior mesenteric vein. And this is followed with the right gastroepiploic vein. And this is what is harrowed here. Remember, we also have a left gastroepiploic vein or left gastromental vein, which is the secondary triple tree of the splenic vein. So we have the right gastroepiploic vein or the right gastromental vein as a secondary triple tree of the superior mesenteric vein. Then we also have the middle colic vein. This is the middle colic vein. 
we have the right colic vein. This is the right colic vein here, yeah, highlighted in black. Then we have the intestinal veins, which include the jejunal and the iliac veins. And this is what is highlighted here in black. Then finally, we have the iliocolic vein. This is the iliocolic vein here. So you can see that even as major tributaries uniting to form the portal vein, which are the splenic and the superior mesenteric vein, they also have their own secondary tributaries that are seen to drain deoxygenated blood, but nutrient-rich blood into them. So this is how the portal venous system is created. So if you're trying to establish the portal venous system that is seen to collect deoxygenated blood, but nutrient-rich blood into the portal vein, then further directing it into the liver where it will be used up. This is the configuration here as we've established. So this is what the portal venous system looks like. So it is specific regions within this portal venous system that will now have anastomosis with the systemic venous drainage. And that is what is tagged the portal systemic anastomosis. So let's move further to see the specific regions where this portal cover or portal systemic anastomosis will be created. Well, it is good for us to look at for some regions before we go further. And this will include the paraumbilical vein. This is the paraumbilical vein here that is seen to drain into the left branch of the portal vein. Remember that we say that the portal vein will divide into the right branch and the left branch. So we have the paraumbilical vein draining into the left branch of the portal vein. So it's good for us to note this region. We also have the left gastric vein. This is the left gastric vein here. This left gastric vein is also one of the minor tributaries of the portal vein. So we should also take note of this region. Then we also have the superior rectal vein. This is the superior rectal vein down here that is highlighted here in black. This vein also be looked at for. So let's go on to see where these sites are located. The first region where we have the establishment or the creation of the portosystemic or the portocaval anastomosis is what this slide will be unfolding. But I would like to establish this based on the region where this is located, the portal component and also the systemic component. So this is the basics onto which I'll be highlighting the sites of the portosystemic or portocaval anastomosis. So talking about the region where this is located, this is located in the lower part of the esophagus. So at the lower end of the esophagus, we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. So let's see what is involved in the creation of this anastomosis. That means this anastomosis will be having a portal component and also a systemic component because it is an anastomosis that is tagged portosystemic anastomosis. So let's look at the portal component of this anastomosis. The portal component of this anastomosis is formed by the left gastric vein. This is the left gastric vein. Remember when we try to highlight specific regions where this anastomosis are created, this is one of the branches that we highlighted. So this is the left gastric vein. And also remember that the left gastric vein receives esophageal branches. So these are the esophageal branches here highlighted. It is this esophageal branches that will be directed towards the lower end of the esophagus. This is the esophagus here highlighted in yellow. And this will be forming anastomosis with esophageal branches from another vein that is from the systemic venous drainage. And this will be the emiazygous vein. So we have osophageal branches from the emiazygous vein here, forming anastomosis with osophageal branches of the left gastric vein. So that is how that is created. This is the emiazygous vein here. So you have the osophageal branches from the emiazygous vein forming anastomosis with the esophageal branches of the left gastric vein. And we know that the left gastric vein is one of the minor tributaries of the portal vein. So it is from the portal venous system. Why the emiazygous vein also gives esophageal branches and these branches is what is seen to form anastomosis with the esophageal branches of the left gastric vein. I will know that the emiazygous vein is a vein of the systemic venous drainage. You can see that a branch from the portal venous system and also another branch from the systemic venous drainage is coming together to form anastomosis. And the region where this anastomosis is formed is at the lower end of the esophagus. And this is what is highlighted here. So finally, the emiazygous vein will be seen to drain into the azygous vein, which will finally be collected into the superior vena cava. So when there's blockage of the portal vein and blood that is supposed to be directed forward, which will then be directed backwards because of the blockage. 
So this blood that is supposed to move forward and be directed into the liver, because of this blockage, will then be directed backwards. So let's see the path through which this blood will move before it will finally be directed into the systemic venous drainage through the anastomosis that is created at the lower part of the esophagus. So let's say there's blockage, there's going to be retrograde blood flow. And this retrograde blood flow will also be further enhanced because of the valveless nature of the portal vein and also its branches, as we've highlighted before, this will allow easy movement backwards. So there's going to be bad flow of blood in this direction. It will further be delivered into the esophageal branches of the left gastric vein. It will run through the region where this anastomosis is created and the blood will be delivered into the esophageal branches of the emiazygous vein before it is then collected into the emiazygous vein. The emiazygous vein will further push this blood into the azygous vein. This is the azygous vein here, highlighted in red. The azygous vein will then deliver it into the superior vena cava. From there, it will move to the vena cava, then the right atrium. You can see that after this blockage, the blood is then further redirected backwards to still be drained out of the portal venous system. So going further, let's look at the second region where the portosystemic anastomosis is created, also within the portal venous system. We are going to be using, as we've established in our previous slide, the region where it is created, the portal component, and also the systemic component. So the region where the second point where we have the portosystemic anastomosis created is in the umbilicus. So we see the portosystemic anastomosis created in this region, and the portal component will be from the paraumbilical vein, this is the paraumbilical vein here, harrowed in red. So this is the paraumbilical vein that is seen to drain into the left branch of the portal vein. We say that the portal vein at a point will divide into two, divide into the right branch and the left branch. The left branch will receive the paraumbilical vein. And this is what is highlighted here in green. So talking about the systemic components now, we have veins of the anterior abdominal wall. So veins of the anterior abdominal wall are seen to form anastomosis with the paraumbilical vein at the umbilicus, and this is where we have the establishment of the portosystemic anastomosis. So let's say this is the abdominal wall up here, and this is where we have the umbilicus at the center, and this is the paraumbilical vein coming to this site where it will be forming the portosystemic anastomosis. So going further on the veins of the anterior abdominal wall, we are going to be dividing the veins into three subregions. We have the veins that will be coming from the upper part of the umbilicus. So from the upper part of the umbilicus here, we have two veins, and these are the superior epigastric vein and also the lateral thoracic vein. We also have another group of veins that will be coming below the umbilicus and these are the veins here coming below the umbilicus. And this include the superficial epigastric vein and also the inferior epigastric vein. Then also laterally, we also have two veins that are coming from that side. And this include the posterior intercostal vein and also the lumbar vein. And these are the veins that will be forming anastomosis with the paraumbilical vein that is coming from the portal venous system. So anastomosis will be created at this region between the portal component and also the systemic component. And this vein, before that drain into the external iliac vein, we know that the external iliac vein will unite with the internal iliac vein here to form the common iliac vein. And this is the common iliac vein here, highlighted in yellow. The common iliac vein will further be drained into the inferior vena cava. You can see that the hand, the blood is finally directed into the inferior vena cava from the portocava or the portosystemic anastomosis. So when we have blockage of the portal vein and its tributaries, we say that there's going to be backflow of blood because the blood needs to be drained out of the portal venous system. And because of this blockage, there is no path through which it will move forward to be drained into the liver where it is needed. So this blockage will now cause backflow of blood. Portal vein and its tributaries are valveless vein. So this valveless nature will also further enhance the backward movement. You can see that some structural presentation around different organs in the body is also used to complement their function. Because if you have valves located within the portal vein and the each tributaries, it can hinder the backflow of blood. But because they are not there, it's going to enhance easy movement of blood in backward direction. So when there's blockage, it needs to look for other routes for it to run. So the blood will then be directed back 
into the parambulica vein, and this will further move into the region where we have the creation of the corticosystemic anastomosis that is formed between the parambulica vein and also the veins of the anterior abdominal wall. So when it delivers into this region, it will further be pushed into the external iliac vein. And we already established that the external iliac vein will unite with the internal iliac to form the common iliac here, highlighted in yellow, which will finally be delivered into the inferior vena cover. So at this point, we have anastomosis created in the umbilicus. And this point, we have contribution from the portal venous system and also the systemic venous drainage. And we already know the veins that are involved in this formation. So going further, let's look at the third site where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. We'll also be establishing this based on the region, the portal component, and also the systemic component. The region where this is created is in the lower end of the rectum. So the lower end of the rectum, the portal component will be the superior rectal vein. This is the superior rectal vein, here arrowed in black. Then this superior rectal vein will be seen to form anastomosis with veins from the systemic venous drainage, and this will include the middle and inferior rectal veins. So we have superior rectal vein at the lower end of the rectum. This is the rectum highlighted here. So we have the middle rectal vein, we have the inferior rectal vein. These two veins will form anastomosis with the superior rectal vein at this point. So there's another creation of portosystemic anastomosis around this region. And it is portosystemic because we have vein from the portal venous system. We also have veins from the systemic venous drainage. So finally, the middle rectal vein will drain into the internal iliac vein, while the inferior rectal vein will drain into the internal pudendal vein. The internal pudendal vein will still further drain into the internal iliac. So the middle and the inferior rectal veins will drain into the internal iliac vein. And internal iliac, of course, will make with external iliac, which will form the common iliac. And we know that the common iliac will finally drain into the inferior vena cava. So that is how the blood will move finally into the systemic venous drainage. So if there's blockage, this is what happens. Backflow of blood from this region region, it will go further into the internal iliac vein. From the internal iliac, it will be directed into the inferior vena cava. So blockage is what is causing the backflow of blood or retrograde flow of blood into the systemic venous drainage. And the only route through which this can occur is through the point or sites where anastomoses are created. So these are the three major sites where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis within the portal venous system. We are going to be looking at other sites, but just for us to know that this is the three major important sites where these anastomoses are created. We are still going to be using the region, the portal component, and also the systemic component to highlight the other sites where we have the creation of the portosystemic anastomosis. So for the region here, we have behind the peritoneum or the posterior abdominal wall. And the portal component is from the splenic vein and also the veins of the colon. So this is the splenic vein here. Remember that the splenic vein is one of the major tributaries of the portal vein. This is what unites with the superior mesenteric to form the portal vein. So this is the splenic vein here. So behind, we have branches and margin and also veins from the column and forming anastomosis with the renal vein. So let's say this is the kidney and this is the renal vein here, highlighted in black. So we have anastomosis created between the splenic vein and also the left renal vein. Left renal vein, because the splenic vein is seen in the left side of the abdomen. So this is where we have the left kidney. The right kidney will be somewhere around here. So it is at this point that it forms anastomosis. So that is why we have the left renal vein. These two veins are not seen to form direct communication length between each other. So there's going to be another small vein that will be seen to link this connection point. And this is the veins of red zones. Here, I like it in red. And you see it linking the left renal vein with the splenic vein and also the veins of the colon at the posterior part of the abdomen. So you have another anastomosis created around this region. So going further, the next site is the bare area of the liver. This is the liver here, I like it in yellow. The bare area of the liver is at the upper part. It is at the region where it is related to the diaphragm. So this is the diaphragm here, I like it in black. So you also have veins that has seen to form anastomosis at this region. And the portal component will be the portal radicals. So these are the portal radicals here, I like it in blue. And you also have 
from the systemic component, you have the diaphragmatic veins. And these are the diaphragmatic veins here highlighted in red. So you see the veins from the portal venous system, which are the portal radicals, and also the systemic venous drainage, which are the diaphragmatic veins, forming anastomosis at the bare area of the liver. So this is another region where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. Then going further, the cyst region where we have portosystemic anastomosis is the fasciform ligament. This is the liver. And the fasciform ligament is in the anterior surface of the liver. The fasciform ligament is seen to connect the anterior surface of the liver with the anterior abdominal wall. And this is what is highlighted here in black. So at this region, you have the portal component and the portal component will be coming from the paraumbilical vein. Remember our paraumbilical vein? So this is the paraumbilical vein here and it will be directed towards the region where we have the fasciform ligament of the liver, which is in the anterior part or anterior surface of the liver. And this will be forming anastomosis with diaphragmatic vein. This is the diaphragm here highlighted in red. So you have the diaphragmatic vein here also highlighted in yellow. You see it forming anastomosis at this region with the paraumbilical vein at the region where we have the fasciform ligament. So this is another region where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. So the last region where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis is the ligamentum venosum. The ligamentum venosum is another region where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. And the portal component will be the left branch of the portal vein. If you go through our previous lecture on the portal vein, we already described this ligamentum venosum. We said that it is a structure that is seen to support the upper part of the left branch of the portal vein. So this is the left branch of the portal vein because we know that the portal vein will divide into the right branch and the left branch. So this is the left branch of the portal vein. So this left branch is seen at the upper part to be structurally supported by this ligamentum venosum. You can go and check that lecture up if you've not, so as to keep yourself updated. So the portal component of the anastomosis here will be the left branch of the portal vein, and this will then be connecting with the inferior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava here, highlighted in blue. So you have a connection between the inferior vena cava and the left branch of the portal vein. And the connection between the inferior vena cava and also the left branch of the portal vein is seen to be connected by another vein, which is the doctor's venosus. So this is the doctor's venosus highlighted here in black. You see this structure connected the inferior vena cava with the left branch of the portal vein. And this is another site where we have the creation of the portosystemic anastomosis. But it's good for us to know that the establishment of portosystemic anastomosis at this point is seen during the embryonic stage. So during the developmental process is where we have the establishment of this specific anastomosis that is created between the left branch of the portal vein and also the inferior vena cava. So it's good for us to note this. Let's look at clinical anatomy and we'll be looking at portal hypertension. Portal hypertension is increased blood pressure within the wall of the portal vein and also its tributaries. And because the portal vein and its tributaries are valveless, this will further enhance the buildup of pressure within the lumen of these vessels. And what this leads to is backflow of blood. When there's backflow of blood, there's going to be the dilation of the veins. So we have dilation at specific regions of the portal venous system. So blood that is supposed to be flowing upward to be directed into the liver will then be seen to flow backwards. And as it flows backwards, there's going to be the buildup of pressure within the portal vein and also its tributaries. And what this leads to is the expansion or enlargement of the portal vein and its tributaries. Liver cirrhosis is a major cause of portal hypertension. We already know that portal hypertension will lead to the enlargement of veins because of the buildup of pressure. So this enlargement are seen in specific regions where we have the creation of portosystemic anastomosis. And these are then given specific names. So we have esophageal viruses. Esophageal viruses is seen at the lower end of the esophagus. Remember that we have portosystemic anastomosis created also at this region between the esophageal branches of the left gastric vein, and also sphagia branches from the emiazygous vein. So when there's buildup of pressure as a result of portal hypertension, there's going to be the enlargement of the veins around this region. And this is specifically referred to esophageal viruses. Then the next one is caput medusa. Caput medusa is seen when you have enlargement of veins around the umbilical region. It's formed as a result of anastomosis created 
between the parambulical vein and also the veins of the anterior abdominal was with the highlighted. So when you see enlargement or swollen veins around the umbilicus, it is referred to as caput medusa. So you see a snake-like appearance around the umbilicus. The next one is hemorrhoids or pile. This we've highlighted in our lecture on the rectum. This is seen around the lower part of the rectum where we have anastomosis created between the superior rectal vein and also the middle and the inferior rectal veins. So you have anastomosis created at this region. And when you have portal hypertension, this hypertension will extend to this region and there's going to be the enlargement of the veins around this region. So this will lead to hemorrhoids or pipe. So this is another specific name that is given to the enlargement of veins that is seen around the portal venous system as a result of portal hypertension. Let's look at these questions. And the first one is to describe photosystemic anastomosis. The second question is to state the relevance of photosystemic anastomosis. The third question is to highlight the different sites where we have the creation of photosystemic anastomosis. And the last question is to describe carport medusa with adequately establish all these in our lecture. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again.